Look what happened. An attempted assassination of former President Donald Trump. The terrifying moments as shots were fired at a rally in Pennsylvania. A suspected shooter and at least one rally attendee are dead. There's no place in America for this kind of violence. Sick. A new timeline of what spectators say they saw and heard. We're getting new information by the minute on this historic breaking news. WRL News at 10 starts right now. Now, breaking news from WRAL. Coverage you can count on. We come on the air tonight continuing to update you on the breaking news we have been following all evening. Former President Donald Trump rushed off the stage at a rally in Pennsylvania after shots were fired in his direction. An unbelievable event today. The president now saying, uh, the former president saying he has in fact been shot. Officials are investigating the shooting as an attempted assassination. We want to show you now the moments that shots were fired. This is just after 6 o'clock tonight. Oh, that's a little bit old, that chart. That chart's a couple of months old, and if you uh, want to really see something that said, take a look at what happened. Oh. The event and the chaos after is just chilling. The former president, you can see uh, he appeared to reach for his ear just before dropping behind the platform. Blood could be, uh, could be seen rushing down his cheek. Secret Service agents rushing to that stage quickly, escorting the former president away. We want to show you where this rally is. It's in Butler, Pennsylvania, about 35 miles north of Pittsburgh. It's part of the greater Pittsburgh region, and its population is about 13,500 people. Here is what we know at this hour. One rally spectator and the shooter are dead. Trump says he was shot in the upper part of his right ear. The Secret Service says the shooter fired multiple shots from an elevated position. Former President Trump posting this message on social media, Truth Social, in the last hour, where he thanked law enforcement for their quick response. And then he went on to describe his experience, where he says he was shot and then he, that the bullet pierced his ear. This is the statement we're getting from the U.S. Secret Service earlier tonight, reading in part, a suspected shooter fired multiple shots toward the stage from an elevated position outside of the rally venue. U.S. Secret Service personnel neutralized the shooter, who is now deceased. The former president is safe and being evaluated. One spectator was killed. Two spectators were critically injured. The incident is currently under investigation. President Biden addressed the nation within the last two hours. He said he attempted to call Trump sometime before 8.15 this evening, but he was not able to get in touch with him. He did, though, share a strong message condemning the shooting. Look. There's no place in America for this kind of violence. It's sick. It's sick. It's one of the reasons why we have to unite this country. We cannot allow for this to be happening. We cannot be like this. We cannot condone this. And so, and I want to thank the Secret Service and all the agencies, including the state agencies, that have been engaged. But the bottom line is that the Trump rally was a rally that he should have been able to can be conducted peacefully without any problem. But the idea, the idea that there's political violence or violence in America like this is just unheard of. It's just not appropriate. And we, everybody, everybody must condemn it. Everybody. When asked if he believed today's acts were an ass assassination attempt, Biden said he had an opinion on what happened today, but he did not want to comment on the situation without having all of the facts. A Biden campaign official says the campaign is pausing all outbound communications and working to pull down its television ads in the wake of this shooting. Brian. Here at the WRL Live Center, I'll be keeping you up to date with the latest information as it comes in. Right now, you're looking live at a reporter from our NBC affiliate in Pittsburgh outside Allegheny General Hospital. There are two TV stations in Pittsburgh reporting that that is where former President Donald Trump went immediately after that rally, and there are also reports that he has left the hospital. If you're just joining us, just getting up to speed with what happened this evening, I want you to hear from one of the witnesses at the rally who describes what he saw. I saw Donald Trump get hit, so it looked like he got grazed in the, in the right ear with a bullet. Um, I kind of saw that go on, and then I looked down, I saw that the man, you know, died in the bleachers. A horrible day, and our lawmakers have been reacting on X. I want to 
take you to Senator Tom Tillis' statement. He said it was a heinous assassination attempt. Thank God President Trump is safe. Violence in our political system can never be tolerated. Also, Senator Ted Budd posted on X, the hysterical and incendiary rhetoric directed at President Trump is fueling this un-American political violence. It must stop. Of course, uh, this is all happening just ahead of the Republican National Convention in Milwaukee. You're looking at a live picture right now. And in the past 30 minutes, CNN is reporting that Republican sources say that everything scheduled for the convention, including President Trump's speech, is still on schedule. You can only imagine the security at that event. Thank you, Brian. Again, local lawmakers are reacting after the shooting at Trump's rally. Messages supporting Trump, condemning violence, started flooding social media moments after this news broke. WRL's Julian Grace is live in Raleigh. And Julian, reactions from across the state continue to come in. That is correct, Dan. Moments after that shooting took place, posts started filling up on social media from lawmakers on both sides of the aisle saying what happened today cannot be tolerated. We watched as former President Donald Trump was whisked off the stage at a rally in Butler, Pennsylvania, just outside of Pittsburgh after gunshots rang out. Moments later, tweets started coming out. This one from Josh Stein, who shared he is outraged by what happened tonight at President Trump's rally. He shared political violence is abhorrent. Mark Robinson posted saying, my family and I are praying for President Trump and his family. And Congressman Wiley Nichols sent a statement saying, quote, I'm saddened and appalled by the tragic news of a shooting at Donald Trump's rally. It was divine intervention that he is not, has not been killed. NC Senate Majority Leader Paul Newton shared his thoughts as well. Life is precious and we should, uh, we should have a culture in this country that values life. And if you have a political opponent that you disagree with, Violence is never the answer. The answer is to uh, marshal your friends and vote that person out of office. That's how we do it here. It is not with violence. Now, Newton had so much more to say in our one-on-one -on -one interview, and I'll paraphrase another statement that he made. He says that he is encouraged to see both Democrats and Republicans speak out on the violence tonight. Reporting live in downtown Raleigh, Julian Grace, WRL News. Yeah, Julian, this rally tonight, really a wake-up call regarding the protection of politicians and the threats that they face. WRL's Carly Haynes is live outside the state capitol with how law enforcement agencies are stepping up should a threat occur here. Carly. Well, actually, we're here in position to see if anybody we gather at the state capitol or to see if there's going to be any additional security in and around the capitol. We did see state capitol police here, but no more than the average patrol cars that we'd see on any other given night. We asked state capitol police if they're planning to increase patrols or protection for politicians following the incident today. They said they're going to continue to monitor events. And just a few months ago, law enforcement agencies, including the Wake County Sheriff's Office, trained on how to keep high profile people safe when they visit the Triangle. Wake County Sheriff's Office issuing this statement tonight. They said, while we do not have information on credible threats locally, we are prepared to safeguard against any incidents in our area. Our office is in close communication with our federal, state, and local law enforcement partners. So once again, no additional state capitol police cars that we have seen here, but they also have a special operations unit should the need arise. Carly Haynes, WRL News, live in Raleigh. Thank you to Carly. And we have, uh, have been reaching out to law enforcement from across the state. We have Rockingham County Sheriff Sam Page joining us now. Uh, uh, Rockingham County, right near Greensboro, an area that sees presidential visits, vice presidential visits, politicians of all sort uh, coming through there for rallies like we saw with former President Trump's today. I was hoping you could tell us a little bit about the difficulties sometimes when a rally of this size comes to town with only a few days notice. Well, a lot of times that's what happens is it's a short notice, but I will say this, that the U.S. Secret Service uh, does a very good job in contacting the local and state officials, state law enforcement and local law enforcement uh, to coordinate with them in the effort when we have our special guests and, and, and dignitaries come in uh, to our communities. Uh, they do a very good job, very good briefings, and everybody has their role, knows what they're supposed to do. And again, I just want to say that, you know, the U.S. Secret Service, they're the they're the premier uh, agency when it comes to uh, executive protection. 
How is it that they lean on local law enforcement when they come to your town and they bring this type of presence and uh, someone like former President Trump or any major official to town? How, how what, what are the, the jobs that they do compared to the local officials and how do you two mesh when it comes to an event like this? Again, back to it again, we always work with our local, state, and federal partners. Uh, when they come into town, and, and, and again, I can't go into a lot of detail, but I will say this, it's a secret service. Uh, when they have the meetings, the pre-meetings, uh, we come in, uh, the, the people that need to be present, uh, to coordinate from the local law enforcement agency to make sure that we're integrated uh, when, when we do whatever law enforcement function it is. And a lot of times, you know, we're, we're on the parameters of the events, uh, but again, we're there to back up the secret service to make sure they need anything from the local side. Uh, and if they have any questions about anything going on in the local uh, area, uh, we're the person they can go to to get that information. In this situation, the gunman was outside of the perimeter. So the closest people to him would have been any law enforcement on that backside. Typically, what is, how is it that the local law enforcement in that position communicate with the Secret Service who are uh, mostly closer to the president? I would say this is that uh, we have uh, a unified communications through our command posts, uh, instant command uh, procedures we follow. That helps to coordinate all the different public safety uh, entities that may be involved during a special event to make sure it's carried out safely. So, you know, we always run a command post, we follow the instant command procedures, and, and then, of course, it's an integrated process with all the players that are involved. Sheriff Page, thank you so much. We appreciate your time tonight. Thank you. It really is such a coordinated effort. Still ahead, the Republican National Convention kicks off in Milwaukee on Monday. It'll go on as scheduled. What last minute security changes could now be underway? Plus, a former FBI agent weighs in on the shock of seeing tonight's shooting play out in real time and the possible breakdown in security at the local and national level. Anthony? And actually, as we switch gears here for a second to weather, we're quiet on radar. We're not tracking any showers and storms out there right now. That is not going to be the case here over the next couple of days. We're going to talk about some pretty heavy rainfall on the way and how long some intense heat could last for us coming up. Get alerted first. When you see this, bad weather isn't far behind. Severe storms, flooding, extreme temperatures, and snow. If it impacts you, we activated WRAL Weather, weather Alert Day. Giving you advance notice so you and your family can be prepared. The largest team of meteorologists working with weather tracking tools that no one else has. Keeping you alerted first. Stay safe with WRAL Weather. That's weather coverage you can count on.